Good day, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. So today, it is a wonderful fun day Friday. And part of fun day Friday for this recording is we're going to be catching up on some health. That's right. For our regular listeners, you know, we fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. I designed this show to focus on balancing those three. It, it is a true essential component. There's lots of domains we could be focusing on in our life. But today's guest co-host knows a little bit about health, knows a little about lifestyle, uh, and she's kind of a little bit obsessed about it. I mean, talk about restoration and helping people optimize that said, quote, healthy way of life. Uh, and she understands the importance of natural health. That's actually something we chatted briefly about yesterday because my own wife is a chiropractic doctor for animals. So hint, hint, we are catching up with another chiro expert, but more on the human front, but who knows, we might rely on the animals too. Uh, but if you have been wondering about ways to control your health better, she's got a lot of stuff up on YouTube as well. Uh, she's got a very, very strong passion for this. She's been at it a little while. And uh, I just made the joke when we started the show that I was trying to say we were close in age, but she was happy to correct me on that. So without further ado, <laughs> Dr. Corey, welcome to the show. Thanks, Scott. I'm happy so, to be here. Let's let's quick, you know, I'm going to cut right to the chase. To this day, my wife and I love our chiropractors, uh, not just because she is one and, and she studied alongside of the, I don't know what you say, she's the, she's a horse doctor who studied alongside of the human doctors because you kind of all go to the same schools. So is that a good way to sum that up? <laughs> we have similar training. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Uh, but the one thing I love is people are like, oh, you go to the bone crackers. I, I, I know you've had people bring this up. You, you've been a public speaker. You know what I'm talking about. And I still get those jokes to this day. And I was like, you, one, it's not bone cracking. Those are uh, air pockets being released. And I'm not even a chiro doctor. I've just been doing it that long. I've lived in Arizona, Co Colorado. I've lived in South Carolina, Pennsylvania. I traveled across coast to coast of this country for years when I was a wildland firefighter. So after my corporate life, I found chiropractic care in the corporate days just to keep me tuned up for running. I, I was doing marathons and stuff back in the day and then went west, did the whole crazy wildland firefighting thing, served as one of the elite hotshots out there, beat the crap out of my body, did not have a lot of balance. Um, and then to the point where I remember one time I fell down a cliff on the side of a mountain on a wildfire. Now, luckily, you have a big pack on and so that takes some of the hit, but my wind got knocked out of me. And then the rest of that fire assignment, I'm trying to hike and I couldn't breathe right. And I know my body and I've been to Cairo enough and getting the adjustments. And I'm very obsessed with massage. You'll appreciate this little backstory. And I try to explain to my superintendent while he's basically telling me to man up uh, that I'm like, no, no, no. I displaced a rib in the rear left quadrant of my back. And he goes, you can't displace a rib. I'm like, well, one, you're not a doctor. You're just my boss. And I was like, I'm telling you, the cartilage, something is misaligned because my intercostals will not fully expand. And I was like, I've had this happen before in a mountain biking crash because I'm an adrenaline junkie and only the chiropractor fixed it. And granted, we're stuck in the mountains. So I was like, I can't keep up with you guys. So when we get back to camp, I, I just, we're, we had two days left to the fire assignment. It was just, it was impacting my performance, but uh, I, I was told to man up. So it's that one little story I wanted to start the show up with because I love throwing back the old stories, but two, it's like, sure enough, get back to base hours, you know, a couple of days later, got to drive three hours to Phoenix to find my regular Cairo that I found in Arizona. And it took two more days to get into an appointment and then sure enough, fixed it. it took a little bit because it had been out for so many days that it was not wanting to go back into the right spot. And people are like, oh, so you dislocated a rib. I'm like, no. No, I call it a misplaced alignment of cartilage. You're the doctor. How would you sum up my fun little story right there? <laughs> I would say you should have asked your boss to give you a big old bear hug and probably would have snapped it right back in. I was bigger than him. Mm, okay. <laughs> so I'm I'm six four and he's like five nine. Yeah, that would have been would have been challenging. I, I could have dropped that on my knees, maybe, and he could have done that. And that's funny. I've done that for friends for years. They're like, "Hey, can you give me the whole hug and lift thing to so do the whole cross your arms and an X?" And I'm like, nowadays, because of experts like you, I was like, "Should I really be doing that?" I mean, I, no. 
you shouldn't. Okay, thank you. But people <laughs> ask me to do it, like, oh, you're taller than me. Can you just go ahead and pick me up? And it feels so good. And I was like, but what if it's done wrong? So uh, anyway, that whole story of misalignment or uh, things popped out of place, so to speak, would that be considered a dislocation? It's not, right? It's a just a misalignment issue. We don't call chiropractors don't call it dislocation. We call it subluxation. Yes, that's right. Because only a on the MD side of the front can they call it a dislocation, or no? Is that a rule? I think it's a rule. well. It, it, I don't know if it's a rule, but there yeah. it's a different definition that MDs use. Yes, I can speak to that because I've had my shoulder rebuilt twice, and the first time because I kept ignoring the surgeon. I don't want people cutting into me. Um, I went through nine dislocations in one year. Not that it's a brag, because uh, it didn't feel good. And sometimes they were so bad, you had to go to the ER, and the guy stuck your foot into the ribs and you know yanking your arm to put it back in. So much, so much fun. Um, but I've been I've been through the ringer, and the surgeon says, Scott, I get it. You've never had a surgery. You're Mister Natural. You've torn almost every tendon and, and, and ligament in the front capsule of your shoulder. It's not like a hip socket. It's wide open on the front. You tear all that. You're just going to keep dislocating. So I had to give in and, and get surgery, and I felt really bad about it. But obviously, it worked out. You live to tell. <laughs> yeah, that was 1999. Mm -hmm. And then and this is why I love my chiropractor to this day, because fast forward the story for you. Then in 2007, after years of racing mountain bikes, I tore it all apart again in a paintball match. And then, because years of mountain biking doing this up and down, down the mountains, I apparently loosened everything back up and then tore it all apart. And they did the same open bank heart reconstruction is what it was called. And then the only difference was in 99, they're using the metal anchors uh, to screw into the bone to anchor the ligaments to. So those still sometimes, there's not, it's not so bad at the airport anymore. <laughs> But then the newer techniques, the stuff like would break down and absorb it by your body as, as it was super, super cool. Um, and I've been fine ever since. But thanks to those years and I'm being a lefty and that all happened on my weaker white side. My chiropractor taught me about mindset work, about one, stop calling your right side your weaker side. Um, there's something to that. There's also the fact that I was basically creating a broken wing syndrome. That's a nickname. I don't know if there's an official title. You can chime in on that. But my massage therapist confirmed it. They said, when you pressed into my scapular tissue, it was like slamming into a wall on the right mm -hmm. side. I had just protected that so much. So it took a good year and a half of my doctor here working on me to just loosen that whole area all back up again and get me to start using the true full range of motion. Even though I was very capable of doing a lot of things, I had no idea. I had done something subconsciously to limit myself, but it was triggering all these other lifestyle impacts. So I thought I was to lay all that out there at the front of the show, just so you and I can connect better. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm asking you to be my doctor, but like stories like that, I'm sure you've been through them all. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. And in the 23 years I've been doing this work, I have seen quite uh, a few things that people may not think about, like, let's say the tailbone, you fall on your butt and your tailbone moves all the way forward. It's extremely painful, not that easy to fix, fixable, but, you know, it's... Um, I it's, know that crash very, very well. I spent mm -hmm. uh, 12 years as a youth ski race coach here in the Pocono Mountains. Um, so we always taught the kids, whether you're skiing or snowboarding, do not fall on your butt. Because mm. yeah. even if you don't break the tailbone, you are jacking that area up. So as you're saying, pushing it forward. <laughs> yeah. what's, some of the, what's some of the big negatives of that? If people don't know that they did that, and it's like that for a while. Oh, it's just very painful. They have trouble sitting. So, okay. Yeah. That's one of the more obvious issues is just this uh, common sit. It's, is, is, it, is it affecting uh, the, your ability to break a plateau as far as, cause I'm, I mean, I was a CrossFit trainer in my free time for years too. So again, proper alignment of the body, teaching the importance of something as simple as being able to do squats your entire life is such a crucial thing as we age, uh, range of motion, all of that. So, or is it just a matter of you're sitting on your bone and it, and it hurts? 
Well, it can hurt when you're walking too, when you're laying down. So it's when any, when any bone is in the wrong place, it can mm -hmm. be very painful. Yeah. Okay. And limit your, your activities and functioning. And, 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 you know, the, the, the level of pain can cause other problems to occur in your body, right? There's inflammation going on and pain, pain syndromes can really drain your energy and make it make your life miserable. So, oh, I, I've thanks to this podcast. I, when I I think I launched it in sixteen. I love bringing on health experts because my audience gets a lot out of it. But obviously, I'm getting a lot out of it. I love it. It's <laughs> like I have become a nut about anti-inflammatory lifestyle choices, not just dietarily, but uh, circadian rhythm, sleep health. Uh, I mean. Red light therapy. There, there's a device right behind me, right? That's something mm -hmm. newer in the past two years. Like I'm a geek about this stuff because if it can impact you in a positive way, little by little, it's all moving things in the right direction. Like I'm a nut about, I had uh, so many before biohacking became a, a viral term. Uh, you ever hear of Dr. Jack Cruz? K-R-U-S-E. Yeah. So he's a big expert in oh, uh, maybe, yeah. mitochondrial health. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. he lives down yeah, in Louisiana. Actually, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all, all the crazy mito hackers, as he called it, he's like, oh, biohackers. Years ago, I had him on my show. He's still the most downloaded episode in the history of my show. That guy's got a crazy following. People love looking that guy up. But again, learning about the importance of blue light blockers at night. Uh, my, my wife is a doctor of Cairo, besides her being an equine doctor, does not wear the blue blockers. She's like, no, it ruins the TV. And I'm like, baby, I, I interview experts all the time. I was like, I bought you the, I was like, the glasses were free. I didn't have to pay for them. A lot of these like glass companies, they sent them to me. I was like, here, block the blue light. And guess what? She has sleep issues. Yeah. Well, I have, <laughs> you know, you can, you can do on your phone. You can get rid of the blue light if you, uh, if you want to on the settings. So I do that. And I, I used to wear blue light blockers when I would do videos like mm -hmm. this. Um, but the reflection <laughs> of the glasses from the from the um, light and the video was causing a problem. So yeah, it's still it still bothers me, though. Here's what I wear at night. There you go. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, it's during the day right now. So we have sunshine. I know, Grant, they, they, there's some experts that say you should still have something even right now. Like they even make what's called a daytime blocker. It's not as deep red as this because it starts shutting things down differently in the eyes and you don't want that <laughs> much of a block. They usually, I think it's usually like a yellow lens versus the red lens. So. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I tell people all the time, like if blue light blocking is not a thing, then why did the big phone manufacturers add it into the software? Because remember, iPhones didn't always have that. We didn't right. always have nighttime, daytime mode. I still have my neighbor. I was over having a, uh, we were grilling a couple of weeks ago and the sun was setting and I went to show him something on the phone and the phone all of a sudden just that, that mode kicked in because I have it set mm -hmm. up. And he goes, what'd your phone just do? It's like, oh, that's moving into night mode because I have an iPhone. What's night mode? <laughs> so I had to go through the whole explanation and he goes, oh, I heard about that stuff. I was like, so again, multi-billion dollar companies have added it into the firmware. You don't think there might be some truth to it? They didn't have to well, put it in there. <laughs> we can, we can, we can see evidence of it in patients. You know, when I have people lock their blue light and if they let's say they have insomnia like your wife and we have them start blocking their blue light among other things that mm -hmm. we need to have them do you can clearly see the evidence that it makes a difference so yeah, yeah. so so you don't have to be you know people don't need to be skeptical about these things i'm very results oriented if you do a and then it solves b then it works so and, you know, even if it's, there's something to be said for the placebo effect, the mm -hmm. placebo effect being that you think that it works, you think it's helping you. Well, guess what? How much do your beliefs about your health affect your health? Oh, 100%, the, the, the 100%. old quote of uh, mind over matter, right? I mean, but then, I mean, I know you're a big geek about, you know, the gut brain connection. I think we have enough evidence now to help us truly understand there is a clear connection of the bacterial health of our, of our guts to the brain health. It is the second brain, if not the primary brain, there is a ebb and flow happening all the time, right? I got news for you. It's not just your gut. You have those, um, 
flora, as we call them, the good bacteria, the good guys, the pathogens that help you digest, they're not just in your gut. You have them all over you. They're on your skin. They're in your lungs, in, in all your mucous membranes, you know, um, your, your you know, private parts. They're everywhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they have intelligence and they're running your body. And the reason that people don't think about it much or know much about it is because you can't see it and you're not paying attention to it. But um, I'm about to put a video up on my on my health channel about about this topic. Is this how, on your YouTube channel? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and screen share because I mix it into the show for you. Uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, again, Dr. Corey, C-O-R-I dot com. Uh, but she, right in her toolbar, she's got a YouTube connection. It cues up a bunch of the, of some of her videos right away. But yes, you have a full-blown YouTube channel. I was watching some of your videos uh, earlier in the week. So because uh, I'm a big, big advocate for the whole autoimmune disorders, like a lot of the stuff that we're suffering from today is unfortunately created by us. So it is reversible most and of curable. The stuff. Most of the stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Every, we have so much that we have done to ourselves that we can undo. We can reverse. You know, uh, we've now got the evidence to prove that type two diabetes is reversible. It is a oh, I do it all the time. Trigger. Thank you. I get people off of insulin every yeah. day. It's one of the it's one of the most um, common things that people come in for help with. So yeah. um, diabetes and digestive dis. Uh, issues are the two most common things I'm seeing now. Oh, and lately, cancer. Yes. Um, all of these things are proliferating. In well, the we, we trace it back. I, I, I'm not sure. Are you a big dates person, like trying to memorize dates and stuff? It's a lot to, to, to always memorize and digest, but I think it's definitely before 1900. Heart disease, diabetes, cancer, it was virtually non-existent. I mean, our it started modern with, ways. Yeah. with the with the with processed foods and it started in the late 1800s with kellogg and cereal Mm. i have a i have a video about that and the history of it but with the invention of the refrigerator which was in the 20s food the food industry started you know pushing foods that were non-perishable that had a longer shelf life and Mm. then they created things like margarine crisco Mm -hmm. these these kinds of um fake fats these inflammatory vegetable oil based products yep right and you know they were the latest craze and they had a whole campaign about how these foods were better for you you know margarine is better for you than butter and to this day people still think that it's amazes me when i'm telling a patient all right i want i want you to change when you're finished with this fake you know butter that you're eating and they think because it's organic that means it's good for them or because it says plant based on it that must be good for them none of that is true when you're finished with with this product i want you to switch to real butter uh, grass-fed butter and preferably raw and we tell people where to get raw butter raw dairy Mm -hmm. which is so rich in nutrients that you're not getting from most of the foods that you're eating. And we can talk about that. This is a great topic because it has to do with skin cancer and vitamin D and the sun. Oh, you're, but- you're aligning with so many people that have been on this show. You ever hear of, for example, Dr. Kate Shanahan? Mm-hmm. She wrote yes. the Fat Burn Fix. Yes. You're, you're on a show with the likes of her. I had her on episode 354. Uh, do you remember the great, well, he's still around, uh, from, from Africa, Professor Timothy Noakes? Mm-hmm, sure. He's been on the show way back on episode 179. I mean, I, I you ever hear of uh, the, uh, the guy who owns the trademark NSNG, No Sugar, No Grains, Vinny Tortorich? Sounds familiar. So he, yes. was a, he was a professional trainer to the stars. His best, he was one of my, he's one of my buddies, but he's one of, one of my former clients. So I helped him uh, crowdfund and we, he's now since launched three documentary films, The Truth About Healthy Fats. And so and he, actually the first documentary was Fat, and the second uh, documentary was Fat Two, and then the third documentary was uh, is all about the fake meat industry. So it's all about inflammatory oils. I mean, trust me, you are aligned with a lot of history in this show because people don't realize that 
we're trying to remanufacture what we think is right. And it's like, no, just leave it natural, leave it simple. And no, like, sorry. Like I tell you all the time, like, I don't even eat fruit. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, I do. I was like, I, I drink, I drink a uh, uh, fruit oil. Like what? I was like, yeah, I'll do a shot of olive oil or I'll do a shot of avocado oil. I'm like, but that, because I was like, technically avocado is a fruit. Mm -hmm. Olive is a fruit, but that right. is a fatty fruit. I'm, I am not a sugar guy. I'm not into any of that stuff. And people are like, I don't, I don't get it. I was like, well, I'll be 47 in a couple of weeks as you and I are recording this. I'm a trim. I fluctuate between 185 and 190. When I was a firefighter 10 years ago, I was 195. I'm right around that 6'3", six, 6'4", six, mark. And people are like, oh yeah, but you got your own gym and everything else. I'm like, dude, I touched the gym once this week. I own my kitchen. Like my kitchen is dialed <laughs> because of everything you're saying. We have to realize we've allowed so many negative influences in that are triggering so much inflammatory responses from inside the body and reflecting outward. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't have scaly skin. Like that's a whole, th that's a whole podcast by itself. People are like, what? <laughs> I can, I can talk about that right? all day. Yeah, I, I, was, I figured you get a g giggle out of you. Like, I was like, where do we want to go with this? But I think you're smart on this because I know, you're very passionate about not just the poor dietary choices because people don't realize that they've we've made the wrong choices because we're listening to marketing and we're right. listening to advertising and granted that's my profession uh, so there's a lot of great marketing and great advertising ergo kellogg ergo the sugar industry and the grain industry that are subsidized by government choices from a long time ago that we continue to allow all these negative influences but i was like guys it's like no you're not supposed to be seed oils were invented for lubricants on machinery that doesn't and mean we ingest them <laughs> they're, su they're super cheap to manufacture so exactly. that that actually is one of the reasons why they started to push it onto the population and um you know this is my definition of food this is how we explain what food actually is because most people don't even think about this mm -hmm. food or food is anything that grows on the ground grows on a tree or has a mother and is minimally processed so grows right. on the ground grows on a tree has a mother minimal processing means something like maybe cooking it or fermenting it um something like that anything else if you do any more processing to it it now becomes a processed product and not a food mm -hmm. and your body can only utilize food for nutrition so you're this is this is how we explain it to people and we get so many people just go oh, never thought of this you don't learn this stuff in school you're well, my, let, let's pause on the school subject Oof. yeah oh. okay <laughs> yeah. i know i know i know you and i are going to get a get, get a little rise out of that too together it's like okay Oh, this person's got a blah, blah, blah in dietetics or, or nutrition, this and dietitian that. And I was like, yeah, but guess who paid for the education? Yeah, exactly. The grain industry, the sugar industry. So the pharmaceutical go ahead, go ahead and, industry, right? Go ahead and get your degree or your certification, but then go and actually talk to functional medicine doctors. Cause that's my new thing. Now I really do like to see the progress I've seen with, with the F what are we, what are we calling them? FMDs. I like, cause again, I always just went right for Cairo balancing out. I don't go see my MD. I told him unless I slash myself open or break an arm mm -hmm. or most dislocations and surgeries, I, I haven't been, I, I finally went to my MD like a couple months ago. She's like, Oh, why are you here? I was like, I don't know. I was like, I figure I'm paying for my insurance. You should update my records. Let's do a full blood panel. And she's like, Oh, do you have any concerns? I'm like, no. I was like, actually, I'll probably be one of your best forms of blood work. I, I just do it for fun now. Mm -hmm. Same here. <laughs> but Kairos and functional medicine, I love you guys, all you professionals because you're helping bring that balance back between Western and Eastern, right? There's that, there should be that ebb and flow. It is very impressive to see what we've done with modern medicine. I'm not declining that. Just look at my backstory of the shoulder surgeries, right? From 99 to 07, there was a clear change in the procedure. My recovery was twice as fast. My, my scars were way less. Like I just bounced back so much faster uh, because of improved techniques, but also because I started taking accountability for my health and my wellness. And the surgeon told me that he's like, oh, you're gonna heal even faster. You're more fit this time. Cause he remembered me the first time <laughs> because, oh, he's like, your records are better. You're healthier, you're fitter, you're stronger. 
you know, balanced and then the techniques are easier, less invasive. So I was like, cool. So it's cool to see that progress, but back to the, some, some of the most simplistic things you and I are talking about right now, what's going in our mouth, like what's going right. into our digestive system, what's affecting the flora, all of these things that people have to go listen to podcasts now, which I'm happy to put out there, but like, okay, they got to go find us on YouTube and podcasts because the regular doctors have no clue what we're talking about. Right. Well, they don't learn it in medical school and it's not taught in, you know, elementary school. You, you, oh. don't, you're, you don't learn about how to, you know, keep yourself healthy in public education. I just want to mention, though, about your shoulder. Hmm. If you were if you had been my patient the first time you had the dislocation, I would have strengthened the tissues nutritionally. Oh, yeah. so that you didn't end up having multiple dislocations and maybe would have avoided surgery. So that's really what my, my goal with I every- I had no idea what Cairo was back in 1999. Yeah, <laughs> I know, and I wasn't, I was still in school then, so- Oh yeah, Wait, when did you kick off, 2001? Yeah, I, yes, I graduated from chiropractic school in 2000 and opened my business in 2001. There we go, a little yeah. timeline there. So, the, so the, the goal with all patients is to prevent the need for pharmaceuticals for surgery um, or for things like chemotherapy mm -hmm. and if that's already the case to um, restore the health to the point that they no longer need need those things so getting back to what i was going to say before the way that we teach people to understand the the role that nutrition plays in their body because most people don't even know why they need to eat they really don't. If you ask the average person, they'll say for energy. And that that is true to a degree, but that's just one of the many processes that occur um, utilizing nutrition. So this is how we explain it. Your body is made out of cells. Every part of you is made out of cells. Your brain is made out of brain cells. Your heart's made out of heart cells. Your skin's made out of skin cells. Every part of you is made out of cells and your cells are constantly dying. Mm -hmm. The reason that you're not dead is because you're growing new ones. So here's the question, where does your body get the material it needs to grow the new cells? And the answer is food, food and water. Mm -hmm. And people don't always know the answer to that. Some people have to think about it. They'll say air, they'll, they'll say water. Um, so if you're eating good food, the definition that I gave, unprocessed food that grows on the ground, grows on a tree or has a mother, you'll go, grow good cells and your body systems will, your organs will be functional and healthy. If you're eating crap, you're going to grow crappy cells and one or more of your organs or body systems will not function properly and then you will have symptoms. Mm -hmm. So rather than looking at it for, from the perspective of diagnoses or diseases, so a diabetic generally is eating crap. They're eating a diet too high in sugar, which causes their pancreas, which produces insulin to overwork. And then they start getting symptoms of high blood sugar. So we don't even have to call it diabetes. We just need to clean up the diet and fix the pancreas. Sure. Voila. Yeah. Is it, the sad, I, I can speak to this because my dad became a type two diabetic and people are like, oh, that's why I love when doctors say, oh, what do you have anything in your family history? I was like, it doesn't matter. Right. Like, yes, it does. I said, no, no, no. I was like, yes, now I have type two diabetes for the first time in my family's history, but that's my dad's fault. That's not my family's fault. That's not my bloodline fault. That is a man-made disease. Yes. He was not born as a type one diabetic. That is completely different. Right. So I was like, no, that's, that's dad's fault. I love him, but no dad. I mean, we, we grew up on a farm. We were in farming. So everything you just said, I, I was like, dad, just do what you did when I was a kid. It's not rocket science. I just, I wake up. I mean, I don't even, I don't even eat when I wake up. I'm saying, but when I finally eat, I'm a, I'm a bacon, eggs and, and beef kind of guy. It's the mother's single ingredients no pro i mean maybe i'll whisk the eggs up and make a fancy omelet you know there, there there's my processing right right exactly super yeah. nutrient dense food clean i, I found local yep. farms to work with right yes. i'm supporting local families and farms and it's not rocket science now granted, i get well, all my food from one of those farms and oh. in fact i have a link 
that anyone in the U.S. can go on and on your find. site. Um, I'll give it to you right now. Is it on your website? Because I'll screen share if it's. It on is there. actually on my website. Yes. Oh, here, it's show, show us how to navigate. Where am I going? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Where's the menu? Is it in the more? Yeah. It's food in food more. resources. Yeah. There you go. Boom. I don't even know how to use my own website. Oh, that's there okay. I'm, I'm usually pretty quick. There we go. Farmmatch.com. Look at that. Yeah. So that's, that's an amazing cool. organization. It's a I nonprofit organization that can match you with um, either a farm that's in your area that can uh, deliver food to you, or you can go pick it up, or Shut they can down. ship it to you. And they do a very good job with the shipping. So the one that I use is Pleasant Pastures, and that's in your state. It's in um, there. There <laughs> you go. I'm right here in Allentown. Yep. I, you just, you just uh, Easton's only 20 minutes away. I got wow. This is my own backyard. Check mm -hmm. that out. Yeah, there's a lot in Pennsylvania because um, they're Amish. So you know, as oh, you, yeah, I'm I sure can, you know. Yeah. Uh, my 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 parents and my younger brother they live west of me another hour, and they're surrounded by the Amish men. Mm -hmm. Like my my brother can go right down the street. And there's a small little farm that decided to switch back to doing raw, raw dairy. Mm -hmm. And he can get yes. raw cheese, raw milk, everything. Yes. And my, my, my niece, she's like, is she five yet? Four. I was like, boom. Yeah. As soon as she, as soon as she went off of, um, you know, breastfeeding, uh, they went on the raw stuff. I was like, he said, like, what do you think? I'm like, absolutely go for it. Yeah. So. It's loaded with, with probiotics. Um, when you pasteurize milk, you're killing all the good stuff in it. You're denaturing the protein. Mm -hmm. So I have a great video about raw milk on my YouTube channel. I interviewed the woman who um, started the organization called realmilk.com, which is dedicated to helping people, educating them about um, raw milk and raw dairy and where you can find it anywhere in the world. And by the way, I don't know if you have listeners outside the U.S., but all of my YouTube, oh, yeah, we do. all of my YouTube oh. um, videos in the description, I also have a link for for people to find clean, nutrient dense food from small scale family farms um, in the description of the video. So if you just go to any video, um, go to the description. Yeah. Um, you'll, right, you'll see, go you'll see a link. Yeah. I love a good a video on deadly chemicals. I'll just click on that one. <laughs> that's a glyphosate. That's about glyphosate. And that's oh. the world's leading expert on glyphosate that I interviewed Dr. Stephanie Seneff. I got to go and back and watch her. Brilliant. She's brilliant. I loved her. She was one of my favorite guests. So there is the new to find nutrient dense food outside the U S there's a link right there. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Weston A. Price. Yeah, Weston A. Price. Weston A. Price was a dentist in the 30s who started understanding the effects of processed food on the human body, not just on health in general, but also on the skeletal structure. He Ooh. started seeing changes in people's teeth and jaws and palates, and he traveled around the world studying indigenous populations and their diets and taking pictures of their teeth and then comparing it to people in civilized countries who are eating processed food and he wrote an amazing book called nutrition and physical degeneration and there's a lot of photos in it if you don't like to read you could just look at the pictures but the weston a price foundation is dedicated to helping forward his research and helping people find these food resources, the real food resources. I love that. Cause I mean, it's, it is hard. Let's be real. I mean, we are lucky to be in a first world country. Um, so, but even in this country, depending on where you're at, there's food deserts and everything else. And mm -hmm. I've reminded people too, like whether you're a carnivore or a vegan, like, okay, but like, dude, the organic badge, it, it's all money. As somebody who grew up in farming, and I know farmers and I know ranchers around this country, I was like, sorry. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's the, it, it was, depending on who you're working with, maybe that farm is following the practices, but not all are. You're paying for a badge. I know farms who can't afford to pay for that badge, government badge of, of organic, and they are doing very clean practices. Right. So if it keeps the pricing down on the food, I'd rather go to a farm that can't afford the organic badge, but is doing everything they can to keep that clean, like uh, where I get my steer from every year, it's a hundred year old farmstead, been in the family for a hundred years. They, she figured out how to plant seven different species of grasses that they grow. 
and they rotate the cattle through rolling pastures to hit all the different species of grasses, which naturally create the marbling that everybody says you got to have uh, from all the grain. And now granted, here's the thing. It doesn't mean grain fed is bad. Now granted, if you're buying an animal or working with an animal from a factory farm where they're dumping Skittles and, and M&Ms into their feed because they're it's free from an old candy factory, this is a thing. I mean, I'm sure you know, know. about that. I know. And I was like, listen, I grew up in that world. Could the four stomachs probably process that? Sure. Doesn't mean it's good. And just like in humans, that stuff's going to go into their fat cells. So I'd rather eat the clean fat, not the toxic fat. <laughs> right. right, exactly. And it depends if they're being fed green, even if, even if it's not, you know, one of these horrible commercial, commercial farm feeding operations, but yeah. The cows really aren't supposed to eat grain. So they're just, they're not as healthy as yeah. when they eat what they're supposed to eat, which is- Well, they're grass. a natural grazing animal. You, right. Again, that's why I love history. People do not ignore history, okay? When buffalo roamed the North Americas, it's like they're grazers, just like cattle. They poop, it, it adds fertilizer to the soil and right. the grass grows back even stronger the following year in that spot where that poop sat. It's, it's a natural right. recycling system. Right. <laughs> Exactly. Um, yes. And when and commercials far farms use commercial fertilizer, mm -hmm. which is petroleum based. So you get the food gets the nutrition from the soil. Mm -hmm. And if you're not using natural fertilizer, after a while, the soil is completely depleted and your food doesn't have any freaking nutrition in it. And then you're nutritionally deficient. And when you're nutritionally deficient, your body systems are going to break down. Yeah. And that's, I think that's a good way to sum it all, sum that part up is, okay, we could keep going down these rabbit holes. I could bring, bring it up other doctors and scientists that have been on this show. Uh, I'm blanking on one, uh, Dr. Sylvia Terra had her on years ago, wrote the book, Secret Life of Fat, right? What goes into the fat, what comes out of the fat, how, how intelligent a fat cell is. And it could literally reprogram itself to serve other purposes in the body. To your point, if you're fueling the body with the right energy sources and the right nutrients, the human body is an amazing machine. It will adapt in an intelligent way, or it'll adapt in a, we'll just call it half-ass way. If you're half-ass feeding yourself or caring for yourself, it's only going to be able to band-aid stuff for so long. All right. And then enough inflammatory responses is what we trigger, you know, more disease and more degradation of, of the body. And this is just me not being a doctor. So please chime in. <laughs> no, I mean, you're hundred percent right. And, you know, we know that the basis of ill health is inflammation, but the question always is what's the cause of the inflammation. Mm -hmm. So people are trained to think in terms of taking anti-inflammatories, whether that's pharmaceutical anti-inflammatories or natural anti-inflammatories. People want to pop pills. I have so many people that come to me with these questions, especially because <clears throat> I have the, the YouTube channel, I'm reaching so many people and they're asking, what supplement can I take to reduce inflammation? And yes, there are supplements that do that, but let's start with a clean diet because otherwise, you're just chasing it. You're just mm -hmm. going to constantly chase it. People and forget that that is a foundation. Right. I, I like, I like what I, I like throwing the word foundation out there. You think about when, when homes are constructed or massive buildings, even the pyramids, right? You start with this broad, strong foundation, mm -hmm. and then everything else that goes on top is still dependent on its foundation. And right. I, I love that because again, supplementation, exogenous uh, supplementation, for example, was it thirties? 40s when I was invented, uh, because I know this is a touchy subject, but I've had uh, Dr. Anthony Chavey from uh, Australia. He's actually a U.S. guy, but he lives in Australia. Um, he's now known as, the what, what's his podcast? The Plant Free MD. He talks about how so, so many toxins come out of plants. And, and again, this is a very polarized subject. Vegans, vegetarians, pescatarians, carnivores, yada, yada, yada. Obviously, he's the carnivore doc. He is all in on the meat. Uh, but he reminds us, like, guys, like, what if supplements didn't exist, right? Back to your point of having a mother, like, okay, well, as a nutrient source in the early 1900s and before, you could not supplement vitamins. It didn't exist. Well, you didn't need to. Ah, see, that's what I was waiting for. Love it. We didn't need to. 
Why? Right. Why, Doc? Why didn't we need to? Because food was food, and the, and you were getting the nutrition from your food. And now, even if you try, almost all of us are nutritionally deficient. So it's a little difficult to correct nutritional deficiencies with food alone. Even if you're eating the best quality food, a lot of people are starting off with deficiencies and you can't eat enough yes. of what you need to correct the deficiencies. And that's where supplements do come in handy. However, I use food-based supplements. So they're actually still food. So even though they're pills or capsules, I say, I tell my patients, this is food in the shape of a tablet. Mm -hmm. And this will help correct the deficiencies that you have. And the, the goal is that you won't need it forever. I, I like that because I brought up Vinny earlier. Uh, him and his partner had create, decided after all the years of being a successful podcaster, best selling book guy, he beat cancer because he lives no sugar, no grains. He is NSNG. So before keto became a thing and everything else, like that's how he got people healthy and fit for the movies when he lived out in LA. He was one of the first ever trainers when personal trainers became a thing decades ago. He's now, I think he's 60 now. He moved, moved out of LA. He's now in Virginia. Um, but he created a, a, a company because he was frustrated that he couldn't find clean supplements. But his whole point was, I'm not going to create a vitamin for every little thing. He said, I'm going to create the ones that we actually do need to consume, right? For example, B12, an essential. Yeah, he was always explaining to people, like, there's essential and not essential. He's like, but he's like, he had that rare condition in the gut biome that he wasn't able to absorb enough B12 out of the food. So he decided to invent a sublingual B12 you put under your tongue. So it's not a capsule. I mean, technically it's like the tiniest little tablet, like you said, it's, mm -hmm. but it's just that. And it ended up being a huge helper for the vegan world because obviously they, B12 is an animal derived vitamin. So, okay. and that's again, a whole other debate. <laughs> I'm not even gonna get into it with people, but it's like, long story short, he was frustrated because most of the vitamin supplement companies, they're adding in something called flow agents. Right. So, okay, well, we want to mass produce things and sell things and make lots of money. Great. The problem is those stainless steel tubes that they're pumping all the vitamin powders and stuff through, well, they move faster through the line and don't get stuck in the machinery when they make the pills, tablets, or whatever they're doing, <clears throat> like something like Centrum, don't buy it. And uh, so I'll bust on the brand for you. And I was, I was like, it's full of crap. You have like little mic microscopic, not microscopic, but like these um, microfibers of, of sawdust is one of the most common things. And then I found out that our cell, me cell membrane barriers are sometimes thin enough that uh, the cellulose, that's what I was thinking of, cellulose can actually pass through that. I was like, well, that's fun to learn. Well, there, there's worse things in commercial vitamins than that. There's artificial colors and flavors and very often artificial sweeteners, which are neurotoxins mm -hmm. and carcinogenic. So you have so to read what labels. What defines a food-based supplement? I think that's a great thing to help clarify because I don't always hear that term and I love it. I mean, it's definitely a differentiator. So yeah, well, the, the, the company that I use uh, that makes food, whole food supplements, they call them, grows the food on a farm. Yeah. They, they, they're the oldest nutrition supplement company in the United States. And yeah, they've you, had you this- You told me that yesterday. What was the name of them again? Because I've heard, I've, a lot of chiropractors sell them. Uh, it's, Stand, okay, it's okay to bring them up. I don't standard care. process. Standard process, thank you. I had, okay. I had one on my kitchen table right next to where I yeah. have the computer. So they have um, a farm. Yeah that they've had since 1929 and uh, it's huge and it's beautiful and completely organic and they grow food and they make supplements out of the food. They have a um, you know, pr uh, process that is, um, what's the word where it's nobody else can, patented process. It's a patented process. Yeah. yeah. Well, they I've call been, it their standard process, obviously is their brand. Uh, you right, know. Yeah. right. Right. And um, I've been there. I've seen it. I've seen them making it. I've actually drank some of the beet juice that was going through the machines making the supplements. And I did, I did end up with diarrhea that day, but that's a whole other story. Well, that's a pure... That's a, I drank too much. Yeah, yeah I drank yeah. too much. It was so good though. Yeah. And yeah, I've, I've actually pulled stuff out of the ground from their farm and taken bites out of it. And, you know, um, it's, 
it's literally made out of food. Yeah. I know it's popular on the animal side too, because a lot mm-hmm. of, there are animal chiropractors. And again, I, my wife does not actually sell supplements with her practice. So I, I wasn't able to clarify that, but she obviously knows the name. At every industry conference we go to, um, they're usually having a table set up there because they've been around the longest. And right to your point, I've always seen standard process around for the equine market for the horses. So mm-hmm. yeah, they, they make horse supplements. They have canine and feline. Yep. I do, I do see animals in my practice on the down low. So don't tell anybody. Um, yeah, I never did I, understand that. I've been threatened by vets. That's why I'm, I've uh, been threatened, um, to be reported for diagnosing and treating animals, which I don't diagnose and I don't treat. I detect and correct nutritional deficiencies and imbalances. And, you know, pets, I love animals so much and pets, um, dogs and cats, mostly what I've I've worked, I had one rabbit, um, they get better so fast. They're not sneaking out in the middle of the night and eating a quart of ice cream or over drinking alcohol. So when you give them just the right intervention, they, they don't undo really well. all right. the good work exactly. you've done as like us dumb humans do. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, exactly. So you just need the owner to be compliant with the recommendations. And, you know, I, I mentioned this on another show uh, earlier in the week, and I had a ton of people um, re- emailing me can you help me with my dog can you help me you know and um people are really wanting help with their animals and the same principles apply to animals as humans they need to eat the correct diet and most of them are not the especially in the u.s the pet food industry is not regulated oh it's so overly manufactured and they're putting such crap in there and i actually interviewed a pet food act activist on my channel and she was telling me about what's actually in these foods and it's it was hard it horrified me i started crying while while i was while i was doing the interview but i feed my dogs raw food um because that's what dogs eat in the wild and they're not you know domesticated animals are not biologically different than mm-hmm. their ancestors and they do really well on raw meat and you know some other stuff kind of like very similar humans they're omnivores and so are we and here's the thing. Let's think about this. Let's also look at some pets that are might have been overbred. That means mm. their genetics are even more screwy. So it's probably yeah. even more important that we're trying to keep them as close as to their natural nutritional process as possible because yes. there's already all these other side effects that I've learned, you know, being married my wife was like cuz again she works on dogs too. So it's like, mm-hmm. "Oh, okay. It's and like my brother-in-law, her mother, those dogs are so well cared for." She makes a joke. It's probably better than my my wife was te- cared for. I mean, she buys she, they're already flash frozen raw dog food like logs. Like mm-hmm. you know, she's a whole chest freezer in the basement just full of these things. I was like, yes, that can't be cheap. And my wife's like, oh no, it's not. But she wants all raw dog food, and that's all her dogs get. I and, always joke that I spend my whole paycheck on my dogs. Yeah, and, and I've, I've tried to have that conversation, Corey. I mean, my my mm-hmm. wife. I was like, babe, you're really really smart. She she went to Cornell. She went to UPenn and then wherever the chiropractic school was, I'm like, you're a smart girl, but we still mix in dry dog food. Mm. Hey, I don't care. You know, it's a fancy bag. I have not know brand it is, but I was like, baby, you ever notice how in the mornings she doesn't eat breakfast before she goes, she, our dog, she, we have a Vishla and before her was our coon hound, but the, the back seat of all of our cars is dog headquarters. I mean, there's mm. every vehicle. So. Same here. They're like, oh, a human wants to ride in the car. Well, now we got to take out the hammock and do, move. All. I was like, no, no, no. Yes. That's just, you, you can drive yourself. Uh, so, but the dog rides with her all day long. She was here with me this morning and then uh, she came back to pick her up. But I was like, she doesn't eat that until she's gone to a puppy play date. We've taken her to the park and then she gets home and she's hungry because she's worked out. And that's the only thing laying in the bowl. Mm. I was like, I guarantee you, if I threw in some of my ground beef from my steer after eating dinner, She's always eating that. Like she never hesitates mm. when there's when there's like you know maybe some trimmings off of some fresh uh, farm fresh bacon that I get. Like she'll mm-hmm. eat that stuff raw. Like she doesn't yep. care. So I was like, yep. okay, bacon's fine, beef is fine. But I was like that raw, that that dry dog food's mixed in. She will nose through everything and eat yep. all the real food first. And I was like, right, pick it out, yeah, baby. Isn't that a sign? Yeah, it is. So it it's is a very healthy and- debate. <laughs> 
I, I have a, um, I had interviewed somebody who talks about uh, animal self-selection. Actually, she's applying it to humans now too, but she's a proponent of presenting things to animals and watching signs that, you know, seeing what they choose, because they will choose usually. I mean, if my dogs find McDonald's French fries on the street, they will freaking eat it and, you know, in a heartbeat. But my dogs are like, they're food whores. They'll eat anything. Well, you're you're but, in the city, aren't you? Right. I'm in New York City. So, so they'll take that happen. over what else is on the street. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. take a French fry over other things. <laughs> but, um, right. But um, if, if I want to present them with supplements or even essential oils, mm -hmm. they will choose. And, and peppermint oil helps them when they have mosquito bites. So they, they got all bitten up. The mosquitoes were terrible this summer. And they're scratching, they're sleeping in bed with me, they're scratching, they're shaking the bed, they're waking me up. Mm -hmm. And I'll just open a bottle of peppermint oil and put it under their nose and they just knock out, they'll go right back to sleep. Mm -hmm. But they will also let me know when they don't want the peppermint oil near them. And you can just, you know, I've been trained to look for the signs. If they, if they start, you know, wiggling their nose and licking their lips, then yeah, it's good. And if they just turn away, like, I'm get good. away from me then yeah. then they don't want it so i i learned all that from the this woman that i interviewed that does the the self-selection she calls it self-medication i don't like the word medication i'll but. say well from a keyword standpoint you might get some good clicks uh because that would draw in a certain incorrect traffic but you you might show up pretty well in the rankings from an seo perspective mm. but i agree with your point don't confuse the point you don't want people getting the wrong concept on that right, so right, i like the self-selection right. idea very very mm -hmm. smart I wish humans can do that better. You no, know, so she says they can, and she was starting to work with humans and having because we we actually can. We've been we've been so um, inundated with chemicals that we kind of have lost touch with our ability to know what our body needs. And a lot of times, when people have cravings, they're actually craving um, nutrients that they're deficient in, but they're they're, um, you know, misinterpreting the craving and, and eating sugar instead or eating mm. salt. And um, she was actually telling me on the video that she's been training people to be able to do that, that self-selection. And we, we see changes with, with people, with my patients, when we get the processed food out of their, out of their body. And it, it takes a while, you know, it takes about 120 days to completely grow enough clean new cells to make a difference but when they have get, gotten the chemicals out mm -hmm. also chemicals change your taste buds they oh, alter yeah. your taste buds and they're also addictive so once we once we're clear then people will start being able to say you know i feel good when i eat this i don't feel good when i eat that i it's know funny even if it's healthy food they notice if it, it, i'm so clear of sugar like every once in a while i have a glass of red wine and I, that's it but like uh, the other day, again, if if my mother made an apple pie, which is like once a year, I'm, I'm eating mom's apple pie. I mean, so now I now that I have a wife, if mother number two makes her peach pie, well, I, I gotta have a piece of peach pie. The problem is I'm so clean that I feel it the next day. It's right. like oh, and then at 46, I'll be 47 in a few weeks. I've been known to get a pimple. Mm. People are like, why? I was like, dude, yes, you don't get. My body is healed. It's clean. My gut responds in a negative way. I'll, I'll generate maybe a pimple or two, which I never get. Cause like, mm -hmm. why would I? I don't right. eat anything that would trigger that. And I, yes. dude, I go out, I go out in my woods. I build, I'm building trails for my mountain bike. I wield chainsaws when storms blow. I, I get dirty and I don't get pimples. Like, right. like oh, that's dirt. I'm like, no. Eh. No. It's dirt on the inside. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I was like, but I, I know you have to, we're coming to the top of the hour. Cause I know you gotta be, you gotta be jetting here in a couple of minutes. Right. So, um, I just figured I'd, I'd mention that to you first, but the reason why I'm bringing that up too, towards the end of the show here is one thing I love about you that you're not, everybody's doing is you're doing virtual support. I want to make sure we did not end the, end the show without that. Because I, a lot, my chiropractor, my wife uses a different chiropractor. We don't use the same one. <laughs> and uh, everybody's got their own style. So her guy, quick, in and out, wham, bam, thank you, man. My girl, she works on me, a lot of tissue work. We talk over things. I love that longer session. I don't get out of my place for an hour. 
I visited her guy. I'm in and out in like 20 minutes. You know, that's it. So it's like, everybody's got their own style. But one thing I like about you is you're, you're doing like, there's a great doctor in the keto world after he went through a lot of weight loss, cutting sugar, inflammatory oils. Um, he's got a good viral following. Have you heard Dr. Tro? So Dr. Tro, he's not in your world. He's MD world, but he's trying to get more of the functional medicine balanced in. But now he's trying to get licensed in every state to support people virtually. Now, do you have to jump through the same hoops in the Cairo world? Or I'm guessing not. You're shaking your head no. So yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, no, I have people from all over the world, virtual awesome. patients. Yeah. yeah. And, I'm you know, getting fantastic that. results. That's really what the bottom line for me, I think I started off saying this is results. Yeah. So that's, well, that's why I loved about your site. Because again, ladies and gentlemen, drcorey.com, but you actually, hey, you want to schedule a virtual consult uh, uh, in the traditional, I hate to, you know, I don't even like that word. Why is the MD world called traditional when modern medicine is newer? I call and it a lot conventional, of what you do, conventional. Thank you. But the people yeah. throw around traditional and it's like, actually, yeah. if you go off the word definition, traditional, yeah, tradition, they're, they're, we should go the, further back. <laughs> the whole, the whole, like the phrase natural health is stupid. Yeah. yeah. It's marketing. It's just, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. So, so you have people all over the world. You don't have to worry about playing the licensing game because you're not dealing with drugs, right? You're not right. dealing with, um, what is the term again? You're not a... You are assessing, but you're not diagnosing. I'm not, right? I'm not diagnosing or treating. Go. I'm assessing nutritional deficiencies and imbalances and helping to correct them. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you, luckily, because of your niche, you can do these things that other practices aren't doing. And even all the chiropractors I know are not doing online schedulable support. So thank you for doing that because there's people out there that maybe don't like their local one, or maybe they're looking for a different or, you know, a second opinion, a third opinion. That's like, well, great. The person doesn't actually have to be in your town. You can just hop online, do a I call. I started call. doing it because of the demand. Once I started that, that YouTube health channel, I, I was bombarded with requests for help. So that's, you know, my whole purpose on, in this lifetime is to try to help restore people's health and educate them. So, I couldn't say no, you know, yeah. I can't, I can't turn somebody away if they're asking. Well, on the help. business, on the business geek side, are you pretty much more virtual than anything now? Is that most of your business or no? No, unfortunately it's kind of 50, 50 and it's a lot. I actually, I'm a stress expert because That's I help so nowadays. many people with stress, but also because of my own lifestyle, I have a very busy physical practice. I have a very busy virtual practice. I do shows with people like you. I have my own show. I have a special needs son. Hmm. I have the two dogs. I'm a widow. I also travel around the country teaching other practitioners You're about like super doc. Kind of. <laughs> and it's it's a lot. I'm trying to find find a way to balance it better so that I'm because I don't think I told you how old I am, did I? No, we just made the joke that you said, Oh, I'm definitely much older than you. So, I'm 60. Like, I'm 60. Okay, so you're Vinny's age. Mm -hmm. Well, then you're like Vinny. If you put your health first, you couldn't tell how old somebody is. It's like, right. that's awesome. So yeah, yeah. You said but, you're older yeah. than me. I figured you're gonna say like, you know, 50s, maybe. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I surprised, I like to surprise people with my age. I'm proud of it, because I worked hard to be this healthy. I yeah. wasn't always like this. I was born um, with a garbage body because my parents ate garbage when mm -hmm. I was conceived and my mom smoked cigarettes. This is before the Surgeon General warned mm -hmm. women that cigarette smoking is dangerous during pregnancy. So I was sick as a child all the time and I worked very hard to get to where I am now, but also in, you know, in interest of staying healthy, I have to find a way to slow down. Well, I'm glad we tossed that back in there. I mean, I saw that in your background. But I was mm -hmm. like, you know, if that comes up naturally in a show, I think that's great. It probably comes up all the time on a lot of the other episodes and podcasts you've been on because people like to see that. But I think that does tie it all back together nicely towards the end of the show because it's like, hey, this is somebody who's actually worked through it before you even had your education. You started learning this from a young age. How do I, how do I flip the switch? How do I live a better life as you work your way up through adolescence in the 20s and 30s and all that? And then it's like, okay, well, obviously you fell in love with it so much you decided to do something about it and help others which That's is right. exactly. I, I love backstories like that i love when somebody has 
I love that come from behind. I just like that backstory. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I like, I, I, I love here. That's why I love reading books from like former Navy SEALs or military experts, because not, it's not about the war. I don't care about that. I love hearing their personal trauma or where they came from or what happened afterwards and how they flipped it around, how they beat, you know, excessive stress issues or you know, chronic conditions that came from that. It's just, just to me, it's just more exciting to see somebody who's clawed their way through it. So. I'm planning to write a book one day because my Do life it. story is is incredible, and um, I just need to slow down a little so I can have time to actually I'll, I'll, sit down. I'll give and write. you my hack because I wrote a book. Uh, I didn't plan yeah. on writing a book, and then after years of podcasting, and my wife telling me that, okay, I don't want to hear any more firefighting stories. So I was like, okay, but I I, I was a farm kid turned corporate monkey gave it all up and went to go live in the mountains and fight wildfires on a hotshot crew. Like it's not a normal transition. And now I'm an entrepreneur. So I was like, all right, I put it into a book and I decided to publish it for charity, self published it on Amazon. So that's called, so you want to be a hotshot because I served as one of the elite hotshots. And the whole point of that though, was, I was like, all right, well, there's a story to be told. People still ask about it to this day and what it was like. So I was like, I'll just write it down. And then if people ask now, I just say, oh yeah, you can go support my charity. Cause I found that a charity too. I'm like you, I, I stay busy. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll just write the book and the book sales benefit the charity. There we go. Cause then I can decide how I benefit others with that charity in case the charity becomes defunct or people get weird with their money and everything else. But the point was, I didn't plan on writing a book, but people were like, oh, wait, that's a pretty inspirational thing. And I didn't know you go through this and that. And, and it was you know, all my trials and tribulations through that metamorphosis. So I was like, great, if I could put a book out there and if it motivates or inspires somebody then it was worth the effort, but your hack for you. I didn't write it. I'm too busy. So I use the, uh, I plug them all the time. Otter.ai, O T T E R. I voice transcribed the entire book. I heard a bit. Somebody else told me about it and I totally forgot. I got to write this down. Yeah. I'm going it, to do it. It's a no brainer because like, so here's your hack. Uh, I drive a lot for business. I travel. So I was like, great. Well, if I'm in the car, just driving for a couple of hours, I always, right now I either listen to podcasts or audiobooks. I call it windshield university. So I just took a flip and said, great, I'll end that podcast. Cue up otter, you know, after, you know, fueling up at a, at a rest stop area and just hit record. And then I figured out once I got good at it, every, every 15, 20 minutes of a recording, I could bang out about a thousand words. Wow. Now, granted, you are going to give yourself more editing because you can export the files into text and word docs, but there's no structure. So my right. editor was like, all right, you got, you, you have to pre edit before I can even hand it to her. Cause there was really no structure, but at least I got the thoughts down Yeah, and it gave me that momentum. And, and then if you need an editor, I got a girl that'll just crack the whip on you. I'll hit I'll, you I'll, up and you'll, you, I'll, I'll ship you the book. As soon I told as her, I was done. like, I need you to beat me up. I was like, if you text me and tell me I'm being lazy, it's okay. Like, a tough love. I was like, that's what mm -hmm. I want. Uh, mm -hmm. And she was amazing. So, uh, but that being said, there's auto.ai. There's, there's another plug of many for those guys. So what's happening next besides possibly writing a book, uh, to help bring the show to a close two prong answer one. If there's anything big and exciting happening next, speaking arrangement like that for the general public. But two, I do ask my guest co host at the end of the show to leave behind it used to be just called final words. And then somebody like you, where you're at, what you're impacting, what I've learned over the years, I've realized, you know what, what is a legacy message that you'd like to leave behind, especially with how you're helping other people? Because I realized, you know, if everything else falls away, money, family, the world cracks tomorrow, like, is there something positive we're leaving behind, you know, on this wonderful little planet of ours? So that's why I was like, you know, what? I flipped it to a legacy message. So one, anything big happening next, Two, is there a legacy message you want to leave behind for people? My big happening is local, so it would only really apply to people that could get to New York, but I'm speaking at something called the New Life Expo at the end of October, and cool. it's um, an expo that occurs. So, uh, it's been going on for, I don't know, many years, like 30 years and all over the U.S. Um, so I am having a, a big lecture we'll see how many people show up i'm kind of excited about it and um i think i found yeah. it are these it uh, brooklyn yeah that's oh, it october 27th yeah. 29th all right that means now i have to update my team to make sure we release this before that <laughs> in case it helps you at all 
So, oh, whoops. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like a challenge. I have so many shows in the queue, but that's good to Thanks. know. I didn't even yeah. know. It looks like they do a virtual too, right? They do actually. Oh yeah. Now that you mentioned it, I forgot they started uh, doing that in 2020. Yeah. yeah. I saw a big zoom panel thing. I'm like, Oh, so that helps people if they want to buy virtual tickets. I'm thinking. Yes. So, yes. That's exciting as well. Yeah. You could pre-register. There you go. Brooklyn, October 27th to 29th. I'll have to see if I'm on the East coast or not that weekend. I think I'm supposed to go somewhere, but Exciting new life expo. I'll plug that into your show. Yeah, you can present there too. If you want, I can hook you up. <laughs> I do need to get into more speaking. I just to you, like your point. It's like uh, another thing. Okay. But I, I, I do, I do like the rap, so it's okay. Uh, but anyway, so that being said, I don't know. What are your thoughts? Anything legacy related? This is what I tell people about making choices about their health and their future. Decide if you want to live as long as you can and be as healthy as possible. Live long, a long, healthy life so you can enjoy your grandchildren, whatever it is that you want to enjoy in life. Or would you prefer to just do whatever the heck you want? Just eat whatever you want, trash your body and go out, you know, with a bang. That's that's the decision that that you need to make. And either one's okay, but if you want to live as long as possible and be healthy and happy and functional, then you need to eat a clean, nutrient-dense diet and take care of yourself. I love it. Well said. Hang tight. I'll give you a proper goodbye off the air. Dr. Corey's words just now ring true to me, ladies and gentlemen, because I can't tell you how many close friends of my own, they're always just like, dude, you're so strict. And I'm like, is it strict? because I've taken accountability for my health. And if more of us just one at a time took personal accountability for our health in this world, one, you're not just living a better life for you, your family, your friends, uh, or the future growth of your, of your life's timeline. But two, you're making a positive impact in your own country, your own town, your own world. You're reducing healthcare costs and health insurance. And uh, do you really want to be in the hospital? No, it's not enjoyable. So all those things she just said totally align with me because that's why I have committed to keep my life clean because it helps me do all the crazy crap that I've done in my life. You can go be a firefighter. You can go skydive for fun. You can go race mountain bikes, wheeled chainsaws, or maybe what I do is silly, but a lot of people get a kick out of it online. <laughs> so that being said, ladies and gentlemen, take her words to heart, take accountability for your own personal health, because once you put yourself first, then you can help others along the way as well. So thanks for tuning in. And remember you too can live the fuel, We'll talk to you guys again soon.